When I talk about the short film, I'm referring to films that are typically six or eight minutes long, max 15. And uh, this is a form that is often confused with a, a longer form, typically 25 or 30 minutes long, and the preferred format for graduation films at film schools. Now, I know of no name for this longer form in English, but in Scandinavia, we call it the novella film. And the novella film is essentially a miniature feature film in the sense that its storytelling properties are basically the same as those of the feature film. The short film, on the other hand, typically six or eight minutes long, has storytelling properties of its own and which differ radically from those of the longer narratives. The short film is an art form in its own right. And from this point on, it's the short film I'll be talking about. One of the main differences between short film storytelling and the storytelling you find in longer narratives is that in the short film, conflict is not necessary. Now, I can practically see your jaws drop as you hear this, and I understand that if there's one thing everybody agrees about, it's that conflict is a necessity in any story. Um, one reaction I have to that is to quote the American politician Mo Udall, who said back in the 1970s, if you find something everyone agrees about, it's wrong. And I think that's the case with the widely held assumption that all cinematic storytelling must be conflict-driven. At least with regard to the short film, I know that's not the case. And as the last part of my talk today, I'll be showing you uh, a short film, an exemplary short film without a, a trace of conflict of any kind. Now, I'm not saying that conflict is bad in a short film. There are wonderful short films which do include conflict in their stories, just as there are wonderful short films without a trace of conflict. And uh, I'll stick my neck out and say something that sounds terribly sexist. Um, in my experience, those excellent short films, which are conflict-free, are generally made by women filmmakers. And I think the explanation is that uh, women are more open to forms of storytelling that are not conflict-driven and have a greater appreciation of the narrative value of interactions that are not conflictual. Um, at any rate, uh, yes, and, and uh, I'll, I'll add that I think there's some kind of connection between testosterone and a preference for conflict-driven storytelling. At any rate, the main point I want to make here is that uh, in short film storytelling, conflict is merely optional. A second important difference between short film storytelling and feature film storytelling is that in the short film, there is no character arc, no fundamental transformation of the main character. Instead, what you find are character moments, moments when characters make choices that change their situation. To have a character arc, you would have to first establish how a character is initially, then you'd have to introduce a catalyst that would convincingly trigger a fundamental transformation. You'd have to show stages of the transformation, and you'd have to show how the character is when the transformation is complete. And you simply cannot do that in the span of, for example, eight minutes. Especially if, as is the case with many short films, story time and screen time are the same. Uh, it would be difficult to convince any viewer that in a span of eight minutes, a character can become essentially a different kind of person. So, in the short film, no character arc, but rather character moments, moments when characters make choices. A third important difference between the short film and feature films is that in the short film, wordless storytelling is a real option. Now, I'm not saying that dialogue is bad in a short film. I think 
Roman Polanski was wrong when he made that claim in the wake of his success with Two Men in a Wardrobe. Um, there are wonderful dialogue-based short films. Think of Jim Jarmusch's first Coffee and Cigarettes short from 1986 with Stephen Wright and Roberto Benigni, or the one Jarmusch made in 1993 with Iggy Pop and Tom Waits, and that won the Golden Palm Award at Cannes for Best Short Film. Um, so there are wonderful dialogue-based short films, just as there are wonderful short films entirely free of dialogue or voiceover. But the main point I want to make here is that in the short film, wordless storytelling is a real option. What I'm suggesting then is that three main differences between the short film and feature film are Number one, that in the short film, conflict is not necessary. Number two, there is no character arc. Instead, there are character moments. And number three, wordless storytelling is a real option. And I think these differences are so fundamental that the narrative models designed to describe feature film storytelling should not be applied to short film script writing. And I think those models to be avoided like the plague are the sequential uh, and highly formulaic models that prescribe, for example, that at page 24 there must be a plot point of a specific type. Now, uh, I'd like to end this paper by showing you a short film uh, made by the Norwegian filmmaker Unistraum. It's called Derailment. In 1993, uh, it was part of the Cannes Festival section called Un Certain Regard, um, and I think it is very much a modern classic uh, in, in the short film format. Um, as you'll see in this film, there isn't a trace of conflict of any kind. Um, instead, there are very subtle forms of interaction between the two characters. Um, there is no character arc, um, and the storytelling is entirely wordless. And I'm showing this film with Unistam's kind permission. I hope you enjoy it.